Uji may not be as famous as Kyoto and Osaka, but this little town, just a 30-minute drive from Kyoto, is known as the match capital. It's got a bunch of cool historical stuff too, like the World Heritage Biodo, and Huduor, the Phoenix Hall. In this video, we're gonna take you on a tour of Uji, where we'll point out all the cool stuff to see, share the best route, tell you about must, visit matcha food places like Nakamura Takichi, and give you some handy tips for dealing with the crowds. And don't worry, we'll also give you the lowdown on getting around the area. Okay, let's begin. This is the route of our day trip to Uji. We'll cover all the checkpoints and share some time, saving tips with you. If you're coming to Uji by JR, you'll need to start your journey from JR Uji Station. But if you decide to use the Kihan Railway, the station is located just a bit up from Uji Bridge and your starting point would be Uji Bridge. As soon as you step out of the JR station, you'll find Nakamura Tokichi Main Store. It's the go to spot in Uji for the best local matcha. Nakamura Tokichi, Honten has a history dating all the way back to 1819. Their tea became famous not only for winning many awards, but also because it was chosen as a tribute to the emperor. Nakamura Tokichi has two branches in Uji, and the main store is always bustling with people because they offer a special limited edition of matcha jelly served in bamboo tubes, like this Maruto Parfait and tea jelly. So if you're planning your first visit, we definitely recommend the main store. Listen, we've got some tips on how to avoid waiting in line at the Nakamura Tokichi main store. When you get to Uji, the first thing you should do is check out the crowd at the main store. If there's no line, go ahead and enjoy the matcha cuisine right away, as some dishes might be sold out if you only get a table later in the afternoon. If there's a line, grab a ticket and scan the QR code on it. It'll tell you where the queue up to and how long you can expect to wait. After that, you're free to check out another attraction. And when it's nearly your turn, just head back to the main store. This will help you save time waiting around. Next checkpoint is the Biodo in Temple. It dates all the way back to 1053 AD and got recognized as a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1994. Now, the star attraction within Biodo and has to be the Phoenix Hall right in the middle of Aji Pond. They wrapped up the renovations on the Phoenix Hall in October 2019. The revamped red Phoenix Hall looks absolutely stunning and has this air of nobility about it. From the front, you'll notice it's perfectly symmetrical. Don't forget to have a 10 yen coin handy, as the back of the coin features the Biodo in Temple. Besides the little 10 yen coin, it's worth mentioning that Japan's biggest banknote, the 10,000 yen won, also has a connection to the Biodo in Temple. You can really tell just how crucial the Phoenix Hall is to Japan. You can take a leisurely stroll along the riverbank and soak in the beautiful Uji River scenery. Plus, you'll spot plenty of sightseeing boats and cherry blossoms too. So once you continue on, you'll come across the next attraction to No Shima Island, right in the middle of the Uji River. There, you'll find a remarkable 13-story stone pagoda, which stands at about 15 meters tall. It's actually the biggest and oldest stone pagoda in Japan as of today. As you stroll through Tachibana Island, you'll come across the Red Bridge, which is called a Adere Bridge. Once you've passed it, you'll find Uji Shrine, and as you continue up the path, you'll reach Uji Kame Shrine. Ujigami Shrine over in Uji is one of those world cultural heritage sites. They set it up back in the early 11th century, and can you believe it? It's been standing strong for nearly 1,000 years now, all well, preserved, and everything. In the shrine, you'll find lots of rabbit statues, along with some rabbit themed souvenirs like Yamamori and Ima available for purchase. They say that 1,700 years ago, when Tadu Joriko was traveling to this place from Hanoi, a lost rabbit appeared in front of him. The rabbit turned back multiple times to guide him to safety, earning it the name Returning Rabbit. Locals consider this rabbit as a messenger of God in the area. When you visit Uji's shrine, make sure to pick up a rabbit souvenir before you leave. The last place to visit is Nuji Bridge. It's a crucial crossing in Nuji. People say it was constructed way back in 646 AD, so it's got a history that stretches over 1300 years. Even though they've reconstructed it several times, they've managed to keep using hinoki and cypress wood for the bridge. Plus, there's some beautiful bronze decoration giving it that antique touch. Uji Bridge is a common sight in classic literature, the tale of Genji. 
the cherry blossoms along the Uji River look absolutely stunning. If you're in Kyoto during cherry blossom season, we really suggest heading over to Uji to take in these gorgeous sakura blooms. Uji has two important train stations, JR Uji Station and Kihan Electric Railway Uji Station. The most convenient and fastest way to get to Uji from Kyoto is by taking the JR Narrow Line. You can reach there in just 30 minutes without having to change trains. If you hop on the Kihan Electric Railway, you can catch a train from stations like Kihan Sanjo, Kihan Jian Shiju, and Kihan Fushimi Inari heading to Uji. If you're thinking of checking out Fushimi Inari Shrine and Yuji in one day, we strongly suggest getting the Kihan Railway Kyoto Sightseeing One Day Pass. It only costs 700 yen and lets you ride the train as much as you want on the Kihan Electric Railway, which covers those important stations. If you're interested in learning more about the various travel passes available in Kyoto and Osaka, check out this video right now. We'll see you at our next stop in Kyoto.